can't replace what's been lost, Sonia. So send out the entire field team. We're not leaving Metropolis until we find it. Excuse me, Mr. Court. I know tonight was just another Ted Court fundraiser, but you were surprisingly quiet. Where well, there's something I need to talk to you about. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. You may have heard about the rumor that's going around about Ted Gord coming to Arrow. A lot of people are thinking that they're going to do a version of the Blue Beetle because of some casting notices, some things that Stephen Amell has said, and some things that they've done in the past. There's even an Easter egg that goes all the way back to season three on Arrow. So if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the DC videos. There's going to be a bunch of stuff happening this summer between this and Titans. There's also a new round of that Legion ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. So the big deal is that Arrow is casting a couple new characters for the new season to bring in, not including the Batwoman. So like she's obviously a big character that everyone's been talking about. But before the season started, Stephen Amell said, we're debuting a new character who, when I heard about it, I just got goosebumps. So he's talking about like a really big comic book character that they're introducing. Then we got the casting notice. It's for a man named Daniel Porter, which is a fake name just to mislead people so that it doesn't give away who the character is actually going to be. He's supposed to be a dude in his mid 30s, so just like a little bit older than Oliver an intelligent tech entrepreneur whose creativity has given him huge success as a businessman. He's gone through tragic losses in his life, something that he hides from the people around him, thus struggling with shaping new relationships with others. The reason why people are thinking that this is going to be Ted Cord is, is because there's this three levels deep Easter egg that goes back to Brandon Routh's character when he was first coming into the Arrowverse. When they were casting him, the description for the character read a lot like this new Daniel Porter character, and the name for his character on Arrow was also coded as Daniel, an easter egg for Dan Garrett, the first version of the Blue Beetle from the comics. So when people read about this brilliant tech entrepreneur that's giving Stephen Amell goosebumps because they're debuting him on Arrow and he has a tragic past, people are like, Wow, well they've mentioned Ted Cord so many times on Arrow in the past. What if they were actually bringing him on the show finally? Like you have that shout out from Moira that was way back during Arrow season one that a lot of you will remember that Cord Industries has shown up a lot on Arrow. Not Ted Cord, but Cord Industries. Anytime a big criminal organization or someone like Slade's Mirakuru soldiers needed to steal weapons, they would steal it from Cord Industries because they also deal with weapons. But it sounds like they can actually bring the character in. He can help them fix their rebuilding problem that they have in Star City. Like right now it's overrun with crime. There's just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. So Oliver needs to fix the city after he gets out of prison. Then there's this whole other ongoing storyline in the Arrowverse with Felicity and Curtis making this new tech company. There's Smoke Industries, this part of this future timeline that we travel to on Legends of Tomorrow. So like there's this whole tech side to the Arrowverse that we haven't done a whole lot with in the last season. And that's really where Ted Cord comes in. So he can sort of straddle both of those storylines. He can basically pick up the baton from where Ray Palmer left off when he went on to Legends of Tomorrow. Because the whole thing with them not being able to use Ted Cord originally is that Brandon Routh was supposed to be Ted Cord, but then the network was like, we have other plans for the Ted Cord Blue Beetle character. They were going to put him in that Booster Gold movie, which I'll talk about in a second. So at the last minute, they just changed the name to Ray Palmer and pretty much used him for the exact same storyline they were originally going to use him for. He built the Atom suit, then he went on to Legends of Tomorrow. The rest is history. But if you guys didn't know, the big thing now that's changed that might make it okay for them to use the Ted Cord character is that the Booster Gold Blue Beetle movie was essentially pushed off the schedule. It still exists. There's still a version of it that Greg Berlanti says that they're going to make. He's developing it with a writer named Zach Stentz. They already have their script, so like it's good to go, but because the tone was so different from what the DC movies looked like a couple of years ago, they just weren't sure where it was going to fit in or how they were going to try and tie it in with the continuity of the DCU. But because all those things got rescheduled and they're sort of reimagining the creative behind the movies, I think the idea is that they're just chilling on the idea of withholding the Blue Beetle character from the TV universe. So naturally, because the Arrowverse has already developed the character quite a bit, why doesn't he just walk in one day and say, hello, my name's Ted Cord. I'm here to fix all your problems. And I also just happen to be a vigilante, the Blue Beetle. And he also would work perfectly on The Flash. But again, the reason why people are thinking this Blue Beetle rumor is going to pan out is because of the whole Daniel thing and just the way that backstory reads. The other really funny Easter egg, if you guys go to conventions, Stephen Amell tells stories about his life before the Arrowverse. 
he told a story because they used the character on Smallville in that booster episode. It's a really funny episode. I mean, obviously Smallville, very different from the tone of what the Arrowverse does. But Stephen Amell himself said that he auditioned for the role of Booster Gold way back on Smallville so many years ago. He said that it was for the best that he didn't get the role just because he wasn't ready for that kind of thing at the time. But you can kind of see how Stephen Amell looks a little bit like the actor who ended up playing Booster Gold. But what they were doing was an older version of Ted Kord who was passing the mantle in the Scarab to Jaime Reyes. So if you remember how they introduced Barry Allen on Arrow and then he went off to the Flash TV show, it was Smallville doing their version of that with Blue Beetle. So you can kind of see that special effects weren't where they needed to be to do a really good version of that character, but it was a pretty solid idea. And obviously he's a big character on Young Justice. So let me know in the comments, just based on all these mysterious Easter eggs and what Stephen Amell is saying, do you think that this Daniel person that they're casting is going to wind up being Ted Kord if he gave Stephen Amell goosebumps? I think that's really the linchpin. If he was just nobody special, Stephen Amell would probably be like, oh, you know, we got a couple characters coming on. It's, it's going to be pretty nice. When he says something like, oh, man, when I heard that we were going to introduce this big character and I got goosebumps, it really does make it sound like it's going to be a big comic book character. The other question to ask, too, is, is are they going to include all these big new characters they just introduced in the crossover when they introduced the Batwoman character? Or are they going to keep that relatively small? Because we have Constantine on Legends of Tomorrow. How could you not include him in the crossover? And you have Barry's daughter on The Flash. I'm really hoping they introduce her to Oliver and the other characters so Barry can just have that awkward conversation trying to explain how it is that she exists here. There'll be new Marvel later tonight, but leave all your requests in the comments below. Congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Chicago Critic. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. Click here for all my Flash Season 5 teaser videos and click here for brand new Ant-Man and the Wasp. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.